If you've ever gone snorkeling in warm, tropical waters, you've probably stared down through that glassy blue surface and thought, wow, it's like an underwater garden. Branches, domes, and blossoms shimmer in the light. Fish dart through shapes that look like trees, and everything feels peaceful and green, like a forest flipped upside down. It's beautiful, calm, and alive. So, of course, you'd think coral is a plant. It looks like one. It stays put. It doesn't chase prey. It even seems to grow like a shrub. But looks, as nature loves to remind us, can be deceiving. Coral isn't a plant at all. It's an animal, a colony of animals, actually. Millions of tiny creatures called polyps, each one alive, eating, breathing, and building. And if that already sounds strange, here's where it gets even wilder. Coral doesn't just live next to plants, it farms them inside its own body. Every coral colony you see is made up of countless polyps, each no bigger than the tip of a pencil. If you zoomed in, you'd see a soft, translucent body with a ring of tentacles and a mouth right in the center. At night, when the water cools and the plankton rise, those tentacles stretch out and start to hunt. That's right, hunt. They grab tiny, drifting creatures, pull them in, and digest them for nutrients. Plants don't do that. Coral does. Each polyp eats, digests, and then, through its base, secretes calcium carbonate, a hard limestone shell. Over generations, as one layer builds on top of another, those shells form enormous underwater structures, reefs the size of cities. What looks like a still rock is really a living fortress, built by millions of mouths working together. But coral has a secret roommate. Inside each polyp lives a microscopic alga called zooxanthella. The name sounds like a tongue twister, but their role is simple. They're tiny photosynthetic organisms that live inside coral tissue, absorbing sunlight and converting it into sugar. The coral feeds them carbon dioxide and waste, and in return, the algae feed the coral oxygen and sugar. It's the ultimate exchange. The coral gives the algae a home. The algae keep the coral alive. In fact, most coral can't survive without them. And here's a little secret. The algae are what give coral its color. Those neon pinks, greens, and yellows that make reefs look like living rainbows. That's not the coral itself, but the algae shining through its skin. When coral gets stressed by heat, pollution, or acidification, it ejects the algae. Without them, it turns ghostly white, a phenomenon scientists call bleaching. And bleaching isn't just a bad day. It's a death sentence. Without its algae partners, coral starves. So yes, coral depends on plants for survival. Survival, but it is not a plant. It's an animal that's mastered cooperation on a level we can barely comprehend. Biologically, the difference is clear. Plants make their own food through photosynthesis. Animals consume other organisms. Coral eats plankton. It digests. It excretes. It has a primitive nervous system that lets it respond to touch and light. And unlike plants, coral reproduces sexually. Once a year, usually during a full moon, coral colonies across entire reefs synchronize. They release eggs and sperm into the ocean in one breathtaking moment. It's like an underwater snowstorm made of of life. The water turns cloudy with drifting embryos, which then float until they find a hard surface, attach, and start building again. And coral's architectural genius is staggering. Each generation adds another layer of limestone, building on the bones of those that came before. Over centuries, these layers rise and expand, forming reefs that stretch for miles. The Great Barrier Reef in Australia, more than 2,300 kilometers long, is the largest living structure on Earth, visible from space. Every inch of it is built by animals the size of a grain of rice, working together with microscopic plants plants in one of the most extraordinary partnerships nature ever designed. The result is a city of life. Fish, crabs, sea turtles, and sharks all live among coral structures. Reefs cover less than 1% of the ocean floor, but support about a quarter of all marine species on the planet. They are nurseries, shelters, and feeding grounds. Ecosystems built by creatures most people mistake for rocks. Coral isn't passive. It's an engineer. It shapes coastlines, alters ocean currents, and literally builds continents beneath the waves. But there's a catch. The same delicate partnership that made coral powerful also makes it fragile. When the ocean warms by just a couple of degrees, coral's algae start to produce toxins. The coral, desperate to survive, expels them. Without its algae, the coral loses both its color and its main food source. And if the stress lasts too long, the coral starves and dies. In 2016 and 2017, two back-to-back -back bleaching events wiped out nearly half of the Great Barrier Reef. Globally, scientists estimate we've already lost more than half of all coral reefs since the 1950s. That's not just a loss of beauty, it's a collapse of an entire foundation of ocean life. And that's the irony. Coral looks eternal, like stone, but it lives on a razor's edge. One degree of heat, one chemical shift, one pollution spike away from collapse. The partnership that built it can also destroy it. That's the line coral walks every single day, between animal and plant, strength and fragility, creation and loss. But the story of coral isn't just about fragility, it's also about survival and the quiet genius of life adapting in the most unexpected ways. Because despite all the danger it faces, coral has been around for more than 200 million years. It has survived ice ages, shifting 
continents, and the rise and fall of entire species. Long before humans ever built cities, coral was already building worlds of its own. The secret behind that longevity lies in partnership. The relationship between coral and its algae isn't just biology, it's strategy. The algae harvest sunlight. The coral provides structure and protection. Together, they form one of the most efficient energy systems on Earth. In a way, coral discovered renewable energy long before we did. It figured out how to power an entire city from sunlight, water, and cooperation. But like any relationship, it only works when both sides hold up their end. When heat or pollution or acidity pushes things too far, that bond breaks and the whole system collapses. That's what scientists are watching happen now across the Caribbean, the Pacific, and the Indian Ocean. Reefs that have been alive longer than human civilization are bleaching and dying within decades. And yet, there's hope, because humans, for once, are trying to return the favor. Around the world, scientists are racing to help coral adapt. In Florida and Hawaii, researchers are breeding what they call super corals, strains that can survive warmer waters. In the Maldives and Australia, they're growing coral fragments in underwater nurseries, like baby trees in a marine forest, and then transplanting them onto damaged reefs. Some even 3D print reef skeletons from biodegradable material, giving young corals a place to settle. Others experiment with probiotics for coral, yes, literally reef yogurt, to help boost its immune system. And beyond the labs, divers, communities, and fishermen are stepping in too. They're cleaning coastlines, reducing overfishing, protecting reef zones, and planting corals by hand, one tiny branch at a time. It's a fight not just for an ecosystem, but for a symbol. Because coral reefs protect everything that depends on the sea, including us. When coral dies, coastlines erode fast storms hit harder, fish populations plummet. The loss doesn't stay underwater. It ripples through food chains, economies, and entire cultures. Coral isn't just habitat, it's infrastructure. It's a shield that softens hurricanes and a larder that feeds millions. We may live on land, but coral quietly holds part of our survival beneath the waves. And when you realize that, coral starts to feel less like a curiosity and more like a mirror. We're not so different from it. We, too, rely on balance between energy and consumption, between cooperation and competition. Coral shows us what happens when that balance tips too too far. It doesn't scream. It doesn't run. It just fades. One color, one breath, one partnership at a time. Still, the story isn't finished. Reefs can recover. Scientists have seen bleached reefs bounce back when temperatures drop and conditions improve. Given time, space, and care, coral can regrow, repopulate, rebuild. We like to divide life into neat categories. Plant, animal, rock, machine. Coral ignores all of them. It's part animal, part solar farm, part architect. It challenges our need to separate everything into boxes. In the coral reef, cooperation isn't a choice. It's survival. If you've ever floated above a living reef, you know the feeling. That soft crackle of shrimp, the shimmer of fish moving in schools like liquid light, the coral towers glowing in colors that seem unreal. You realize you're not looking at a forest or a city or a garden. You're looking at something older and smarter than any of those. A living network that runs on balance and trust. And that's what makes coral so extraordinary. It's not a plant pretending to be an animal. It's an animal that built its entire existence on collaboration. Every reef is proof that cooperation can create beauty strong enough to be seen from space. So the next time someone points at coral and says, what a pretty plant. You'll know the truth. It's not a plant. It's a civilization. It breathes, it fights, it glows, and it endures, quietly proving year after year that life isn't about taking sides. It's about finding balance. Coral isn't just an animal. It's nature's greatest architect, building stone cities out of sunlight and cooperation, and reminding us that maybe that's exactly how survival was always meant to work.